it going, everybody? Levelum.cast. Welcome to a showcase today. Yes, we are talking one of the most elusive 20 packs to ever hit the market for the Matchbox brand. This particular pack has a lot of ins and outs for Level M personally here. Um, this pack is right at the tail end of basically Mattel's uh, original experiment with the Matchbox brand. Mattel bought uh, the Matchbox brand in around 97. So 97, 98, 99 to 2000, those were those were great years. Those were really good years. Lots of good stuff coming out. Lots of realistic stuff. Tons of new castings. Uh, even the generic castings were very, very good. They were very realistic. Really, really good stuff coming out during that era. Uh, in 2001, Mattel decided that the Matchbox brand was going to become the kids brand, the toy brand, uh, aimed more at like the preschool level of uh, collectors, I guess you can say, or kids. Um... And the thing is, is that Mattel didn't realize the amount of Matchbox collectors that existed in the market. So over the years, 2001, 2002, and then 2003, 2003 is when they introduced Hero City. Um, and then Hero City carried over to 2004. This is a 2004 pack. Um, in 2004 is when they really hit the peak of their, like, destruction of the Matchbox brand. And that is called the Ultra Heroes. That is these super fantasy ridiculous looking models um that that just that killed the brand i mean it just killed everything their sales sales were terrible things were not being sold it was just a terrible terrible time for matchbox at the time i had collected all the way up to that point i only collected matchbox at the time i only collected matchbox at the time i didn't collect any other brands once these hero city things came out for these ultra heroes that was it that was it i was done i was done um, I, I lost all interest in collecting. I sold my entire collection. I got out of it and I was out of it for a couple of years uh, until I got back into it at the end of 2006 when I realized that the Matchbox brand was actually coming back um, the way it should have been uh, years prior. So this pack is quite uh, important to me uh, here at Level M. I have spent an enormous amount of time over the last five years trying to uh, put together all these ultra heroes it's been very very difficult this is a very elusive pack um, it doesn't come up for sale very often you can usually find the models individually now the reason you have to buy this pack is because there's a number of these models that were never ever released on a single card they were only released in this pack it's the only way you could get them okay the space buggy was one of them this husky snowmobile was one of them um, and i think this uh this jumbo sweeper downhill um, if it was released on single pack it was in extremely low numbers um, but those are the ones the other one that's in here is hidden behind the little logo right here that is the qb roller it is literally a football with wheels that one uh, was released on single card but it was released in very very small numbers very very difficult to find now i got lucky enough to pull this one off of ebay after searching for years and years and years i got it for a pretty fair price um I'm pretty happy about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack this open. We're going to just kind of go over the models and stuff like that. We're going to look at the ultra heroes and stuff that we've acquired uh, through here to complete it. Because this now completes all of my ultra heroes, which is extremely important to me. Um, and I'm no longer going to be searching for those anymore. Um, so I'm super, super happy about that. And then there's a couple of models in here I don't have in the collection. Um, nothing really fancy in here. Like I don't have this uh, fire truck. Um, I don't have the uh, the dump truck right here, but I'm pretty sure I have everything else in the mix. So uh, we're going to crack this guy open and take a look at the models. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at, of course, the packaging itself. This is multi-language, so it was designed for uh, the world market. Uh, this is sealed. It's the exact same type of 20 packs that they've used forever, although I don't think they've really done any more two, 20 packs uh, unless it's like an Amazon thing, which comes in just two stacks, 10 packs, which is not not the same in my opinion. This is the back here. They did have a ton of play sets at the time. Again, like I said, this was being pushed towards a different demographic for sure. So lots and lots of play sets and things like that. Uh, definitely a very, very uh, rough time for sure. There is some uh, box deets down there. There it is, 2004. Mattel, of course, everything made in China. There is your barcode deets, all that good stuff like that. It is just in a typical, uh, pretty much like an oversized five pack with the clear front. So we'll just go ahead and uh, tear off the one side. 
get this out of here. I know there's going to be some people like, why are you opening that? Well, we open everything. And I have spent so much time of my life trying to hunt down this pack um, that, uh, for me, this is, uh, this is a nostalgic move for me. So we'll slide this out of there. It's a little big for the studio. There we go. Get the box out of here. Throw the box away. It does come with this uh, cover on it. I thought that was part of the other part of the box, but tis not. A little bit of tape on there. Let's get our little, little cut guy here. We'll get that chopped. One more piece of tape on the other side. There we go. Get that up. Take a look at these models. This is the bulldozer, the generic bulldozer. This model uh, originally came out, I think, in 2001. So copyright 2000, probably came out in 2001, but originally this had rubber wheels, or rubber tires. I mean, it had real rubber tracks on here uh, at the time. Um, you know, in, in the early, in the late 90s and the early 2000s, you know, Matchbox was actually able to make things with a lot of moving parts and some rubber parts. I mean, they were, they were able to make some cool stuff, but uh, certainly not anything like that anymore. Uh, just says Hero City on there. Of course, uh, the decos during this era were were not good. They were not fancy. They were not uh, unique, uh, at, at least in my opinion. They were pretty pretty bland. Uh, this is the Pontiac Solstice. Uh, this model has not been used very much at all. This looks pretty decent, though. See that? Get that Matchbox logo to focus there a little bit. That is the Circle Matchbox logo. The Solstice is definitely not a model that's seen diecast all that much. But uh, GM made, you know, the Solstice, the Sky, um, and I think there was one other one. Um, these were their, you know, you know, coupe, rear-wheel drive, sports cars, things like that. There is your Bates Deets there. That one is MB612. Uh, so, back in the day, 2003 Mattel. Uh, next one we'll take a look at. This is the Road Roller. This is actually a pretty good generic. Um, it does uh, have a moving part and it clicks. So it'll stay there. It also has the drums that roll, which looks pretty good. That one is 2000 Mattel. There is your Matchbox logo on the other part of the base. I think it looks pretty cool. Again, it just says Hero City. I mean, the, the lack of, of, of thought that went into this era um, doesn't surprise me that the brand almost died. Uh, in 2004 because you know the, nobody was was uh, to my in my opinion nobody was caring about the brand all right this is important to me this is the first time i've ever even touched this model let alone seen it in person this is your qb roller there is your qb roller this is mb number 558 i think or 658 I'll get that to focus a little bit so 658 um this casting's only been used once. Uh, as far as I know, this was never ever used again. It was just one time. Um, and you can see it's just a football. It's just a football. Um, nothing in like special about it. It doesn't open up. There's no moving parts. Um, and then it just has Hero City's uh, print on the one side with the uh, gold saw blade wheels. Not all that great, but uh, I guess at least it made itself to market. Uh, not, not exactly an easy one to get to market, but it made it to market. It's fine. So it's, it, it is what it is. All right, next one we'll take a look at. This is one that uh, is actually one of the better models to come out of kind of this era. Uh, this is the Land Rover SVX. So there was a couple different versions of this one. This has some simple prints on the back, just some taillight prints, says Matchbox, stuff like that on there. Looks pretty good. The integrated spare tire. This was a concept uh, Land Rover. I don't think this ever made it to production, but there is your Dietz there. This one is 628. Of course, made in China, 2003. Mattel. This is a new model for the original Hero City time. Whew. All right. Another super, super elusive one. As a matter of fact, this one didn't even get a deco on it. Um, and if you look at this, this looks like it's like an FEP sample. Um, it really does look like it's like a regular FEP sample. Um, just looks super, super generic. So, I'm looking at this. Let me check something real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So, for a second there, I thought this might actually have a Hot Wheels wheels on it, but it's got the flower wheels on it. Those wheels on the front are the flower wheels. But uh, this looks just like an FEP sample. This doesn't look like this would be a final version. 
um, cause it just doesn't look, it doesn't look appealing. You know, the chrome front here is just kind of interesting. So on the base here, this is the Husky Patrol. This is MB uh, 657, copyright 2004 Mattel. So not too often you see the copyright the same day or same year it's released. Usually they are ahead of time. Uh, but this one was squeezed out right at the very, very end uh, in order to complete the line. Just has a plastic um, you know, handlebar and stuff up there. But this one looks exactly like an FEP. There's a teeny little print on the front, which is supposed to be like the the snout of the Husky. But um, you know, this one's not too bad. Um, and I think that's only because the tampo's like non-existent. Um, there is supposed to be like a simulated tail on there as well. But uh, first time I've ever seen this in real life. First time I've ever touched it. Um, I was beginning to wonder if it even existed. But uh, now I have it in my hands, which is just crazy, crazy to think. All right, next one up. This is the Armored uh, Patrol Vehicle. Uh, this one just, of course, says Hero City on it. Police, again, nothing super fancy. Uh, this one is kind of okay when you give it some military deco. Um, but as police, it just looks like it's just a tyrannical communist regime um, as a police vehicle. So definitely doesn't look good with that. This one does have a moving feature. So the little back part slides out. And then there is your troop carrier section in there. Those are your riot shields. So kind of cool details in there. Like I said, it's it's much cooler when you view it as military rather than police because it's it's like I said, it's it's a little rough. So armored response vehicle. This one does not have the uh, man number on the bottom, unfortunately. But uh, it's it's whatever. Whew. All right, here's another one. So I have seen this one for sale loose on eBay a little bit here and there. Uh, some of them have been a little chipped up. There's literally no point in buying these if they're not mints. Um, I just don't see the point. Uh, most sellers want between 30 and 50 bucks a car. Um, I got this whole pack for a little bit more than that. So I got a pretty good deal. Um, this one, again, I don't think that this one was released in a single pack, but it might have been. If it was, it was super, super low numbers, but... It, Otherwise, um, this is where it's at. So we'll get the deets in there. So this is called the Jumbo Sweeper. Looks like the man number might be 659. Again, this is those Ultra Heroes. They're just terrible. Looks like a, a, a elephant. You know what I mean? It's just it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, I get it. You know, this is like for preschool kids, but not not for Matchbox. I mean, this is ridiculous. Um, you know, this one has a finished deco on it, so this doesn't look like an FEP, but that Husky Patrol definitely looked like an FEP for sure. All right, the uh, six-wheel dump truck. I actually really like this casting. I think that this one's really good. This is generic, but I think this was a really good replacement for the Fawn, uh, even though they still use that casting to this day. Um, I still think this was a great replacement. Um, I guess they don't want to use this one because it has the extra axle. But, I mean, it doesn't have anything extra besides the axle. I guess they have to squeeze the pennies like that. Um, I think it's hilarious that it has a Tonka uh, dump truck on the side. I never realized that. It literally has a Tonka on the side of it. That's ridiculous. Again, this, this goes into them just not caring for the decos. They just... Whoever made these decos at the time, it was just like, do something, slap it together, get it out the door. Don't, don't do anything fancy. Uh, as far as the base deets, there you go. 2001 Mattel just says it's a dump truck. It's had a few names over the years, nothing fancy. I think, you know, other than it being a Tonka on there, I don't think the deco on that one's horrible. But, of course, it just says Hero City like they all do. Every single one just has to be plastered with Hero City. Here's the police car. It says police force on the side. Again, just Hero City. Everything Hero City, Hero City, Hero City. Uh, red window on this one so that it has the red light bar on the top. Uh, this one also has a moving feature. It does have an opening trunk, which is kind of cool. Has a laptop in there. It looks like maybe a laptop, maybe a thermos, maybe, and a flashlight, maybe. So I don't think there's been any changes to that one over the years, but just kind of cool. It's a generic car, but I think this one doesn't look bad. Um, it definitely has like that rugged off-road look. I'm not really sure why everything has to look like that, but um, other than that, it looks pretty decent. Again, just super generic base deets on these. No man number on this one. You know, not a lot was going into the design of these castings at the time. They 
they were trying to do things as cheap as possible, and they, they didn't use a lot of the castings from the late 90s and early 2000s that were the good stuff. Uh, this is another one that I don't have. Um, at least this one doesn't say Hero City on the side. It just says H2O in black. It's a generic fire truck. It's not super bad. Um, it does have a moving feature, though. A little, little squirter does rotate 360. Um, it has a little notch in there, so it doesn't uh, fall over. But, uh, you know, just, just super simple. This is what they called the crown wheel. It's a terrible, terrible wheel. Uh, hopefully that wheel never, ever returns. I can live with the saw blades, but the crown wheel is just such a terrible wheel. I just think it just doesn't look good at all. Quite a bit of detail on the bottom of this one, so maybe the person that designed this one was a little bit more attention to detail. 613 is the man number for this one. 2003 Mattel called Boom Fire Truck is what they call it. To me, it's just a, just a regular fire truck, nothing fancy. All right, the school bus, the generic school bus, actually went through... Uh, several uh, reiterations uh, throughout the uh, early 2000s up until here. The original one had some opening doors. Um, so then they were replacing that international that they had been using forever. Um, it had an opening door and the door works. It looked a little bit more rugged than this one. It was way more boxy than this one. I do like this design better. This looks more, uh, more modern. But uh, there you go again. Just Hero City, Hero City, Hero City. Um, Hero City School on this one. It's a generic, you know, it's, it's a school bus. It doesn't need to be super fancy, but it'd be nice to have a little bit of effort into some of this stuff. Uh, man, 614 is the number there. 2004 school bus, as it was called. So, just more and more reiterations. Let's have a couple of uh, sun windows on the top. Or, you know, view windows or whatever you want to call them. All right, one of the most disappointing castings to come out of this era was the Dodge Ram SRT-10. Yes, this is the actual SRT-10. But for some reason, they're like, we need to lift it and make it all like four-wheel drive and jacked up, even though it's a street racing truck with a V10 motor in it. Uh, Matchbox decided that they were going to just make it an off-road vehicle. Um, and then they just threw some stuff on the side. to say Dodge Ram SRT-10 on it, but then they threw like screws and stuff on it. Trying to claim it's a work truck. It says Hero City. Of course it does. Not sure what those wheels are called, but I'm not a big fan of those either. I don't think those were that great. They're not terrible, but uh, they're not great. Um, and then just a red window. Uh, no interior. This, this model has no interior inside either. So that's a little bit peculiar. There is your base Deets 2002 Mattel. Dodge Ram SRT10. This one does not have a man number on the bottom. Oh, it has the scale though. 170th scale is what it claims, but not a good casting, not a good casting at all. All right, moving on to the Honda Element. Um, not a bad casting, not a great casting. Um, the design is pretty nice, you know, with the body brakes and stuff like that, so they can get that, that cladding and stuff in there. The casting itself is not super great. Um, you could tell it's an element, but... I just don't think like the headlights and the details on the front look all that great. Um, I don't believe this casting has an interior. I think it's uh, no interior. Um, but it does have quite a bit of print on it for being a basic release. There is your Honda symbol in the back. says Matchbox on it. Got the saw blade wheels. Just says Honda Element on there. Matchbox 632 is the man number 158, 156 scale. Ah, it's It's okay. It's okay. I can understand why they have never brought this casting back because it, it wasn't good enough. Um, but at the time, I guess this was this was okay at the time. It was something that they can do. It was is survivable. All right, moving on to our next guy. This is the replacement for the snorkel fire truck. Yes, the snorkel fire truck that was used uh, from the late Lesney era all the way up until about 2002. Um, and then they replaced it. So it's basically like a modern version of the same snorkel truck, which... Would never be built, um, but that was just easy for them to do. Uh, this one just says MFD on the side, Matchbox Fire Department, so luckily there is no Hero City on it. E121. Uh, the original version of this casting actually had a full working boom. Um, it actually opened in two separate parts, 360 around. Um, this one doesn't do anything. It doesn't even rotate or anything. Uh, it is a separate piece, but it just snaps in there and does absolutely nothing. So they were really really having to cut all the costs at this time to survive it does have matchbox in the grill there which i think is not good not, not good 
Uh, Chrome base on this one, which is very, very interesting since Chrome is supposedly so expensive. There is your base seats there. Of course, China. It looks like uh, get the, the shine to go there. MB602 is your man number. Again, not very good. Kind of a uh, bluish, greenish window on it as well. All right, one of the more decent things that actually came from this era, uh, this is the uh, 350Z, which was actually a really, really good casting. As a matter of fact, Matchbox is still using this casting uh, here and there. But uh, 350Z, very, very good casting. Very, very good. Very simple prints on the front. Uh, silver lights with a little bit of gray or black for the uh, grill down there. Uh, but the casting looks good. does have an interior in there. Um, some of the uh, versions that Matchbox has used recently, they took the interior out because whatever reason. Uh, but there is your base Deets. This was man number 611. Uh, 161 scale. Nissan Z. This one's actually not too bad. It looks good in red too. So not too shabby. I mean, there was a few good things from back then, but, but not very many. Uh, Jeep Compass. Jeep Compass. This one does not have an interior either. Uh, this was a uh, concept Jeep that was never built. But Matchbox's uh, relationship with Jeep is very, very, very strong. So Matchbox has done most all Jeeps for the last, I don't know, 25 years or so. Um, not every single one of them, but most every single one of them. And uh, they continue to pump out new Jeeps even to this day. 627 is your man number 159 scale. See, it does have some four-wheel drive systems in there. But uh, I'm sure those were just added in by pure um, fantasy. All right, next one up. This is the, um, I think this is called the Seaplane, Sea Helicopter, Sea Rescue Helicopter. There you go. 2002 Mattel. Looks like no man number on this one. This one is pretty nice, though, because it does have the uh, section that comes out. So now the uh, helicopter looks appropriately sized. Uh, this one also has the two blades that open up, um, and they just kind of fall into each other like that, and then it works. So one of the nicer things to come out of the Hero City era was something like this, which actually looked pretty good. There is your deets on the side. just says police force, nothing fancy. Got a number on there, yellow window, no interior, obviously, because the tail section goes in and out. But uh, it's pretty nice. It was a pretty good replacement for... The uh, Mission Chopper, I think that was the most appropriate replacement piece, was this one. Um, even though they had some other helicopters that they kind of replaced the Mission Chopper with. All right. I really like space. I really like space a lot. And I've actually been wanting this particular one for a long time. Um, but I never, ever see this one for sale individually on the, the bay. Um, but this is the Space Buggy. This is a Ultra Heroes, um, which basically it's just a helmet on four wheels. Uh, this one also uh, only came in this pack. So if you're looking for this one, it only came in the pack. There you go, 2004 China Base. Really nothing fancy on there. See if we can see the number. 654 is your man number, just called the Space Buggy. Um, this one's actually pretty cool. This one's pretty cool. Cool detail on there, kind of NASA-esque. Uh, obviously not NASA itself, but it's NASA-esque and uh, looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy about this one. Um, I found this once in a dump bin. It was missing this uh, satellite dish on here, which is added on piece, and this little antenna on the back, which is added on. Um, those were both uh, missing from it and had a couple chips in it. I still bought it because, you know, it's the closest thing I had at the time. But now I have a nice new minty one. I'm pretty happy about that. All right, very last one in the mix. This is called the Wall Eater. Yes, I'm not making that up. It's called the Wall Eater. Um, I'm not sure if that's what they put on the base, but it is called a Wall Eater on the cards. Demolition Machine. This one is kind of cool because it actually has some moving parts. It actually has a couple moving things here. Obviously, it's meant to be a demolition machine, tear stuff down. Uh, it does rotate as well. So it does all the things you expect it to do. Uh, just doesn't have any working tracks and of course there it is hero city tnt of course hero city hero city hero city but uh it's not too bad it's a neon yellow boom which is really weird uh over orange but that's it is what it is so there you go that is the full 20 pack it's probably one of the most elusive 20 packs 
uh, at least in my opinion, in the history of the Matchbox brand. Let's see if we can get that to stand up. There we go. Uh, it's not the most elusive pack, because the most elusive pack is this guy. Good luck ever getting a hold of that Silverado. Um, but uh, there you go. There you go. A little bit of history, a little bit of walk down memory lane for Level M and kind of what this is. And Let me know what you guys think about that pack. Let me know what you think about them Ultra Heroes. Um, I will be doing a showcase at some point uh, going over that entire set of Ultra Heroes because it's important. It's important. We got to know where we, we've been so that we can know where we're going. So, anyways, we're going to roll out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Level and Doc Cassian. Peace.